Hello, it's great to see, see all of you. I'm, I'm excited uh, to be here and to have this even last minute chance. Sorry, I'm getting a couple things in order so that I can show them. So um, this all started with, uh, I have a 3D printer and I was interested in what a space filling curve might feel like if you print it in 3D. And um, this is something I'd love to have a chance to talk to Martin Gardner about. I grew up doing things. I think this problem is going to go into this interesting intersection between math and physics. And first thing, when you're printing in 3D, you want to, if you just print layer by layer, there are weaknesses inherent in it when it jumps up a layer to print. And there's something called vase mode or spiralized mode that if you have a single outside perimeter, then the 3D printer can slowly increase its z-axis while it's going. This leads to more beautiful objects and stronger objects both. So here was, when, when I first printed this, I was kind of very just amazed at how flexible it is because a lot of things I would 3D print are quite rigid. And in playing with it, I serendipitously kind of turned it inside out. And I was like, well, that was beautiful and unexpected. <laughs> and I put it on Reddit, and it was the first thing I ever put on Reddit that people kind of resonated with and, and liked. And um, I was like, well, let me try some other things. So the one of the next things I tried was like a simple snowflake pattern. I'm not sure where the focus is best. Um, and it's like, you can, you can try and guess, like, okay, well, what does a snowflake look like when you invert it? And it's like, in this case, you get a different snowflake. It's like, okay. Um, and as this goes uh, along, let me just show you the next thing. Here was something that the, the normal Gosper curve that's put up isn't closed, so this is a, a modification of it to make a closed curve. And this is what I've included for my uh, gift exchange on here. And also, I mean, it's flexible, it's interesting, and it also has an interesting inverse property um, to it. So being the mathematician that I am, and I was talking about this with some of my uh, colleagues, is how hard is it to figure out what the inverse of some curve is going to, going to look like? And of course, this is, um, there's a couple of weird things going on here. It's like when you invert it, um, there's some tension that's pushing here. And, and I have a couple of mathematical things to say, but um, let me just show you one of the, uh, so, Goal number one was what inverts to itself? And so we're like, well, a circle will invert to itself, and sure enough, I can print that, and it does invert to itself. But what's something more interesting than the circle that inverts to itself? And if we take this and invert it, it inverts to itself. Um, and this is, you might notice that this heart is kind of a little pointy, and that's because the length on this side has to exactly equal the length of a semicircle because they switch roles um, when, when it inverts. So that was fun to notice. And um, that happened just in time for Valentine's Day, which led me to create this little interesting character, which some people said looked like a demon lord or something. And if you give this to somebody and say invert it, <laughs> get this surprising outcome. <laughs> I love that you guys love that. That's great. I, I was very like happy to see it go too. Um, also, I started playing with other fractals, like the Coke Snowflake. You can tile the plane with two uh, sizes of the Coke Snowflake, and so this was just a different thing to play around with and invert. And you you get you get interesting interactions whenever you're you're playing with these curves. So. Taking this one step further, here's another version of the heart, and I don't know if you can tell, but the edge is not completely vertical in this case. So if the problem wasn't hard enough to keep it in 2D, I was just starting to wonder, like, well, what happens if we, we tilt things? And when you invert this heart, you will, it still looks like a heart from here, but now you'll notice that it's actually curving and once it starts curving, you, you start asking more questions again of, well, um, okay, let's make it more extreme. I'm going to go in and out and in and out and um, 3D print the, this. And then when I invert this, I get this wavy shape that is now oscillating more in the third dimension. And this is completely open. I mean, part of the reason I didn't submit this talk in time to get an official slot was because, <laughs> like, all of this is new, like in the last month. And as far as I can tell, there hasn't been any research done on it. And I would love 
to work with anyone who's interested in this. So finally, in anticipation of the next holiday we have upcoming, we have this funny little guy. I don't know, you can imagine this a leprechaun, but when you invert this, <laughs> get a little clove. And finally, there's some very strange things. And you can imagine that we have somebody who's trying to make some comment here. And I'm going to give you five seconds to think what this might invert to because it's themed to the conference. All right. <laughs> so thank you very much. Have a great day.